Formal charge is a very important concept for organic chemistry mechanisms. And uh, there are many ways to calculate formal charge. I, I think this is the best way. Formal charge is equal to number of valence electrons of that atom normally. And from that number, you subtract the actual number of electrons around the atom in your dot structure. So let's look at an example uh, of formal charge calculation involving methane. So methane is CH4, so we can go ahead and draw our methane molecule like that. And I'm going to go ahead and show all of the electrons in these, in these bonds for all of the pictures that we will draw in this video. And it'll just make our life much easier when we're trying to calculate formal charge. So what is the formal charge of that carbon atom? Well, carbon being in group four of our organic periodic table, carbon normally has four valence electrons. From that number, we're going to subtract the actual number of electrons around the atom in my dot structure. Well, in, in, the, in the covalent bond between carbon and hydrogen, one of those valence electrons came from hydrogen, one of those valence electrons came from carbon. So carbon has, has one electron from each of these bonds. So there are four electrons that are surrounding carbon in this instance. So the formal charge would be four minus four, which is equal to zero. So carbon has a formal charge of zero in this, in this instance. All right, let's do another one here involving carbon. So this time, this time we're only going to give carbon three bonds. And you might say, well, that's not really following the octet rule. And the octet rule, the, the eight electrons around carbon, that's really that, that, that's really a, a maximum, right? So carbon can have a maximum of eight electrons around it. It's actually okay for carbon not to have eight electrons or fewer than, than, than eight electrons around it. What that means is carbon will just be very reactive to get those last two electrons to achieve an octet. So once again, carbon normally has four valence electrons around it. How many electrons does it have in this, in this example? Well, once again, we know that in these bonds between carbon and hydrogen, one of those electrons came from carbon. So we can see now we have only three electrons surrounding my central carbon atom there. So four minus three would give me plus one. So this, this carbon is actually positively charged. So a positively charged carbon. Positively charged ions we called cations. So this is a, a cation involving carbon. So this is called a carbocation. So a carbocation. What is the, what is the shape um, of the atoms around my carbon atom there? Well, I could calculate my steric number really fast. So from an earlier video, we saw that steric number is equal to the number of sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs of electrons. So three sigma bonds, zero lone pairs of electrons. Steric number is three, which means that this carbon is sp2 hybridized, right? So we have an sp two hybridized carbon with, uh, with, with zero lone pairs of electrons around it, which must mean that the shape surrounding this carbon is trigonal planar. So all of those atoms are in the same plane, right? So if I, if I attempt to draw a plane here, right, um, I could put my carbon atom here, and then those hydrogens are going to be surrounding my central carbon atom in the same plane. So I didn't do a very good job drawing it, but I think you get the idea. And, and um, if it's sp2 hybridized, it has a free p orbital, right? We know that from our videos on sp2 hybridization. So there's a free p orbital here, and there's a positively charged carbon. So carbon wants to get eight electrons, so it has a place for two more. It has an empty p orbital, so it could fit a total of eight to achieve its octet. Let's do one more example involving carbon. And this time, we're going to put carbon with, with, uh, with three bonds around it and one lone pair of electrons. So let me just go ahead and draw my hydrogens in here. And let me go ahead and put in my electrons in these bonds as well. So 
As usual, carbon has four valence electrons normally. And how many electrons does it have in this case, right? Well, it gets one from the carbon-hydrogen bond, one from this carbon-hydrogen bond, and then one from this one, and then two from the lone pair of electrons. So there's a total of five electrons surrounding carbon in, in this case. So it's actually four minus five, which would give me a negative one formal charge. So this carbon is negatively charged. Negatively charged ions we called anions. So you might be tempted to say this is called a carboanion, but that would put two vowels next to each other. So we actually drop the O and just call this a carb anion. So a, a carb anion is a negatively charged carbon. What kind of a shape does this uh, carb anion have? Well, the steric number, right, would be the number of sigma bonds plus lone pair of electrons. So that's three sigma bonds plus one lone pair of electrons, so a steric number of four. And that must mean this carbon is sp3 hybridized. So remember from one of our videos, uh, sp3 hybridized carbon with one lone pair of electrons is going to exhibit trigonal pyramidal geometry. So carbanions have a trigonal pyramidal geometry. Let's calculate formal charge for a nitrogen atom. So let's let's go ahead and, and apply what we've learned to nitrogen. So here is a here is a nitrogen, and I'm going to give it two bonds and two lone pairs of electrons. So what is the formal charge on nitrogen? And let me go ahead and put in my electrons here as well in those bonds. Well, nitrogen is in group five on our organic periodic table. So nitrogen is going to have five valence electrons normally. Right? So five valence electrons normally. How many electrons does it have in this dot structure? Well, once again, in the covalent bond between nitrogen and hydrogen, one of those came from nitrogen. So I can go like that. And uh, when I do that, I can see that there are a total of six electrons surrounding my nitrogen atom here. So it normally has five. In this case, it has six, right? So it's five minus six, which would give me a negative one formal charge, right? So nitrogen, in this case, has a negative one formal charge. And whenever you see nitrogen with two bonds to it and two lone pairs of electrons, at two lone pairs of electrons, nitrogen will have a formal charge of negative one. So it's it's very helpful to be able to calculate it. And you know, the more you calculate, the better you will get at recognizing these patterns, and you don't even have to go through the math anymore. So two lone two lone pairs and two bonds would be a negative formal charge. What about what about if I have uh, three bonds to nitrogen and one lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen? So let me go ahead and put in my other electrons, and then let's see what kind of a formal charge nitrogen has in this example. Once again, nitrogen normally normally has five, right? So how many electrons this time, right? So it gets it gets three from these bonds and then two from the lone pair. So it's five minus five, which is obviously zero. So no formal charge for nitrogen in this instance. What about what about nitrogen with four bonds around it, right? So nitrogen with four bonds and zero lone pairs of electrons. So let's go ahead and put in our electrons from these bonds here. And let's see what kind of a formal charge nitrogen has in this instance. As usual, right, we say, okay, group group five, so five valence electrons. Right, well, it gets one one of these guys from each of these bonds for a total of four. So five minus four will give me plus one, right? So nitrogen has a formal charge of plus one whenever it has four bonds and zero lone pairs of electrons. So that's the trend here. Let's do let's do uh, a little bit a little bit more uh, complicated looking example. Let's do an organic molecule that might be a little bit more intimidating. Uh, and let's apply the rules that we've learned and let's calculate the formal charge on nitrogen in this instance. So what is the formal charge on nitrogen? Well, let's go ahead and put in our electrons, right? So it makes it easier to see. So I have a double bond here. Each one of these bonds consists of uh, two electrons. So that would be my setup like that. So nitrogen, normally has five valence electrons. And let's see, well, let's see, I, I know that nitrogen is going to get, you know, these electrons from these bonds, and it has a lone pair on it like that. So it's five 
minus 5, which is 0. And again, I didn't even, even need to do the calculation. Nitrogen has three bonds to it and one lone pair of electrons. So, so three bonds and one lone pair of electrons would be this example, which I know has a formal charge of 0. So you can either do the calculation, or again, after you've done a lot of them, you, you, you just pretty much know what the formal charge is through experience. So let's do, let's, let's do an example where, where you're given the formal charge and, and they want to know how many lone pairs of electrons are on that atom. So if you were given an example like this, a negatively charged nitrogen, and the question was, how many lone pairs of electrons are on that nitrogen? And, and, and the, reason, the reason you'll see this a lot of the time is uh, chemists will usually leave out lone pairs of electrons and just draw formal charges. It's a little bit faster to do that. So, um, so let's see if we can figure out how many lone pairs of electrons are around that nitrogen. Well, there are two ways to do it. The first way would be the really easy way, and that would just be to say, OK, nitrogen being in the second period must have an octet, right? So if it has two bonds to it, right, it's surrounded by four electrons right now, so it would need it would need four more, right, for a total of eight. So there are now eight electrons surrounding this nitrogen. And you, you could calculate the formal charge really fast, and you would just double check, and, and you would see that is a formal charge of negative one. So, so the answer is two lone pairs of electrons. The other way of doing that, the longer way of doing it, would be to say, OK, let's, let's use some numbers. Let's use some math here. Well, I can go ahead and put in my electrons in these bonds. And I can think to myself and say, nitrogen, nitrogen has five valence electrons around it normally, right? And if it has a negative formal charge here, that must mean it gained an electron, right? So it, it, it's now up to six electrons. So it needs six electrons around it. Um, let's see how many it has, right? It only has two, right? It only has two electrons around it. So it has only has two, it needs six, so it needs four more. So that means two lone pairs of electrons around my nitrogen. And that, of course, gives me my, my negative formal charge. So we got the same answer either way, right? Either, either doing the octet or actually doing a quick math calculation. And this is an important skill to develop as well. In the next video, we will do uh, more formal charge practice.